and this is a simple uh, application for silver light. Usually silver light application are two pieces, the XAML piece like this SL test complete application in here. And also there is another project which is going to be the host, whether it's an HTML or ASPX, that will host the whole thing. So you'll notice in my application I tried to use MVVM to give an example of what's happening even on a simple level. We have the views, these are all the user interface screens that I have in here. I have my view models are in the middle to be able to talk directly to my model. And you'll notice in here I have a model which is the AdventureWorks database that comes from, uh, from Microsoft, for instance. So I've actually created some events, I created some commands to be able to calculate things. Let me just go ahead and run this application here really quickly and it will compile it. I have Chrome actually to be my default browser inside of uh, on my machine in here. Let me go ahead and take this control C of this local host that's running locally on my machine and I want to start it in Internet Explorer and the reason why I wanted to do that is because an Internet Explorer and Firefox these are the 100% supporters right now instead of test complete. So I'm going to um, go ahead and paste that local host and I am right now running this application as a Silverlight app. So what happened right now, everything of course running on the local host, so, but it had to download the zap file of the entire application to my client machine, and right now it's running inside of this Internet Explorer using some Silverlight JavaScript code that did this, uh, allowed it to happen. Um, one of the things I wanted to show in here, for instance, is that we can use built-in controls from Microsoft, like the Silverlight controls in here, or I can use third-party controls, whether it's coming from Telerik, Infragistics, Component One, um, all these other third-party companies. So if I click on the Silverlight controls in here, for instance, notice it's loading all this data from AdventureWorks, and I can also click on Telerik controls right there, and that will load their own grid. This is the Telerik uh, red grid that comes from Telerik controls and I can actually see uh, the data automatically manipulated in here. I can drag specific territory IDs and sales IDs and make filtering, do whatever I want inside of this script. Let me go here for a second for the Silverlight controls and now let's take a look at what exactly can um, test complete see inside of this application. There is test complete running right here. I'm going to go ahead and open up maybe a new, um, a new project. We'll say new project, project number six is fine. And I wanted to show you that first of all in Test Complete there is a very neat little tab in here called Object Browser. If you click on that you'll see everything running in memory that Test Complete can see. And in here inside of Internet Explorer process I can see the page for the local host that I'm on right now. And I can see the form because I'm running an ASP.NET application. And I can see also there is something called Silverlight Control Host which is inside of a panel of that page. The fun part is, notice that there is something called Object Zero in there. If I click on this Object Zero, notice there is the icon for Silverlight. Test Complete automatically recognizes that there is a Silverlight application running inside of this page. And I didn't have to do anything special in Visual Studio or even running the application in, in, in IE. I didn't have to uh, include any libraries or run it through any utilities or anything. This is the real Silverlight application as is. And the important part in here, you will notice there is a uh, few of the objects in here are having the name UI object and some other of them called SL objects. And you need to understand this piece, this is very important. The UI object, this is coming from Microsoft. Microsoft has an MSAA uh, framework for UI automation objects and this will show up automatically for every single Silverlight application. Believe it or not, whether it's uh, running uh, in the browser or out of browser, you will always get this UI automation object shown. The nice part is this SL object. Once we see SL object, this is great because that means the test complete can actually go a lot deeper and let you know about the internals of the application itself, all the functions that have been written in the application. You can get to objects um, and functions, properties, and fields of these objects themselves. I can still use my object uh, finder in here for the object spy and I can drag my object spy and test uh, complete to be able to highlight and see the row, the data. I can go for instance something that says uh, 4100 which is the bonus in here. I can leave the, uh, release the mouse in here. The object spy will show you exactly what the object is. I can click on this uh, button in here to see what exactly this object in the hierarchy. See it highlighted itself. So deep in the hierarchy of the SL object, I have access to my test block. Right there, it says 4100. If you take a look at the methods, these are all the standard and actions, standard methods and actions available. 
Also, there's tons of different silver light functions available in here, in the hundreds. If I go to properties, notice that not only you get the standard property of the specific text block, but you also get the silver light ones. And anything that has a little donut next to it, that means that this property is um, read and write. That means I can write to this property automatically from inside of Test Complete right now from the object browser if I want to. I can change the font, I can change the font family, the size, the content, whatever I want, anything that has a donut next to it, I can do that in here just to test it out. The good news is this SL object for test block in the XAML, which is, as you can see here, this is definitely the XAML representation internal to the, to the Silverlight application. All the way at the top of the screen, this will be the name of the object in memory, the full path to the object in memory. So I can actually copy all that stuff and go to my J script or VB script in test complete, and I can actually start now talking or modifying specific values and so on. I can also do checkpoints on properties, object checkpoints. Everything you are used to inside of test complete will still work with Silverlight, and it will work great at that point. The part uh, that I would like to really show you as well is the fact that if you start recording something by clicking on recording in here, let's say for instance I'm going to go to Telerik controls, and I'm, let's go ahead and click on one of the, the, uh, the rows in here, and I'm going to stop the recording just to show you that if you do that, it will recognize, of course, the process. It will navigate to that specific uh, page, and it will be able to see the page, to see the hyperlink button in XAML itself, and there is a text block right there. Notice if I click here one more time, you will see the entire name. It's a very, very long name. Once you start recording in Test Complete, it automatically does something called name mapping right here. See that name mapping? It means from the machine to Internet Explorer to the page to the ASP.NET form to the host. And from this point on for the object, it actually re renamed or name mapped every single object in here to be able to see. That is the red grid view from Telerik, for instance. So this is the hierarchy of objects. Maybe you do not want to keep saying sys dot this dot that for half an hour every time to get to the object that you want. In the aliases in here, you have exactly the same representation of all the objects for, uh, for the Silverlight application. Okay? If I drag this red grid view in here and put it right on the left side of this aliases, Notice in here, folks, that I have not only the Internet Explorer, but I have the red grid view as a main element for the alias. That makes it extremely easy to write decent code, so you don't have to write code that has like 10, 15 different levels of a hierarchy. So I can go again to my test two, and instead of having this entire name like this, I can change it. See that? And I can actually go to red grid view and say OK. Now I can actually say aliases.redgridView. Instead of that, huge name, for instance, to get to the specific object. So name, name mapping can be great for you. Sometimes name mapping can actually cause problems if R&D is not giving names to the Silverlight or XAML elements. That means every time you run your Silverlight app, there is an automatic name will be created in memory. And that would be a sad thing to do, unfortunately, because you will not be able to use name mapping uh, very heavily because the name will change every time. There is a different way to do something like this. We're using the find all and find children. So you can be looking for an SL object anywhere in the hierarchy. So that by maybe a different name than the name of the, uh, the ID, but maybe by one of its properties, maybe it has a content called hello, you want to find it this way. So you don't have to absolutely find your object using the SL full class name, as you can see in here. Maybe there is multiple red grid views and you want to find it by a different property. You can definitely do that by using find all and find children and so on of the SL object as, as well. Some of the questions sometimes I get about uh, silver light testing, which is the fact um, that you, you get, for instance, some animation going on. There's some storyboard and you do not want to start the testing until the animation stops. Maybe it takes two or three seconds for something to fly over, you know, or oh, the silver light, the goodness about uh, animations and storyboards and so on. So there is uh, functions in Test Complete itself that will help you do that, like wait for SL object. Wait for SL object, you can actually wait on a specific property of an object to be idle, for instance. So you will not run your test until the object is idle and it finished its animation and so on. So you can do all these things with ease in Test Complete as well. One of the questions that I noted that came in during the week from audiences today, uh, one of them would be like, I can't really see all these things 
when I'm actually running in HTTPS, for instance. And to answer this question with HTTPS, there is a little bit extra work that you'll have to do. As a matter of fact, there are three things that I'd like to, to mention here that are very special to testing cellular life application. One of them, if you're not running in Firefox or IE, a lot of people create their own uh, IE web user control, so they embed it inside of their own application. And once they run the app, even IE is embedded inside of their app, they don't see this SL object stuff. They only see the UI object. So that's one. The other one is uh, we were lucky in this application that the entire ZAP file was included in the page. Right? Some applications do not up, uh, download a ZAP file. They actually have code specific to upload XAML file dynamically. And if you do that, unfortunately, of course, the, the, the subsystem in Test Complete is looking for the ZAP file. And if you're doing the uploading of the XAML files on the fly, it will not recognize the objects inside of your application. And the third and final one is, of course, if your application, whether it's HTML or ASP.NET or PHP, is running in HTTPS. At that point, you will have a problem. You will not be able to recognize the objects inside of the server light application. So what do you do to make this happen? Notice here on my machine, I'm going to go to where um, test complete was installed. is under program files in here. And there is automatic QA. There is my test complete aid. I want you to notice there is a directory in here called open apps. So even if you're not a user of Test Complete yet and you'd like to download the trial from their website, you will still get all that stuff. Under this open apps, there is a directory called Silverlight right there. And this tcagpatcher.exe is your friend. You don't need it on most of the Silverlight application you'll be testing. But if it's any of the stuff that I mentioned a few seconds ago, that means it has to do with uh, HTTPS or um, something other than Firefox or IE as a web user control or it's, down, it's uploading the XAML files outside of the ZAP file, you need to run this command line utility called TCAG Patcher and pass the name of the ZAP file. Alrighty? Uh, once you point it to that, what this TCAG Patcher.exe file will do, it will insert a couple of assemblies from Test Complete itself and it will change the app manifest for the Silverlight app. So it doesn't actually change anything of your code. So that's the good news. The good news is it does not touch the application that was written in Visual Studio. It just changes the manifest and it adds a reference to two test complete assemblies to be able to allow you to do all that stuff, whether you're using HTTPS, uh, XAML files on the, on the fly, or running inside of a web user control. Or